Hey guys, it's Brina from The Resilience Pod. Stay tuned for today's episode and I can't wait to see you. Taking his customers on a journey into resilience through partnerships, really understanding the organization through teamwork and awareness programs topped with over 15 years experience. Wow, let's just take a moment to pause there in not just business continuity, but crisis, all the resilience disciplines, making him an organizational resilience subject matter expert topped with guys, not just one, but two awards um, winner guys, and especially one being his crisisology thesis. Today, my guest on the resilience pod is Roger Payne. Welcome, Roger. Thank you Hi, for Rina. being here. Hi. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. You it's... are? So he's feeling good. Now, guys, as you know, earlier I, I always ask the guests on the pod to tell me how they're feeling before the interview. So Roger has done that already and he's okay. going to show show the guests what what he's feeling today before before the interview starts. So uh, yeah, um, There is a reason for this um, <laughs> because um, I fell miserably this morning to get any breakfast. So... At the moment, I'm peckish. He's peckish, guys. <laughs> At the end of this interview, we're going to ask you how you're feeling and hopefully yep. you're not still peckish <laughs> and, uh, and, and something or more else. Um, as for myself, I'm feeling very focused because I want to ask what are all these questions and hopefully he'll give us some exciting answers. Uh, my first proper job. Um, so that was working for the Department of Trade and Industry. Wow. Um, weirdly enough, directly opposite where I currently work now. Um, um, which is quite bizarre <laughs> in Victoria. What a coincidence, what a coincidence. Um, so um, I was a um, accounts assistant yep. many moons ago um, and assistant. I was there for about a year. Okay. About a year, yeah. yeah. Doing their first job mm -hmm. to experience, um, you know, some of the human elements of, of maybe bad decisions mm -hmm. um, um, was a bit of a shock. Yeah. Um, um, so... So um, um, really, when you you know, if you if you get to read my dissertation, um, um, even though I'm not actually referring to my first job, yeah. I'm affirm referring to pretty much every single organisation out there um, um, that operate in what I call a negative error culture. Yep. Nice. Um, so negative error culture is essentially um, um, where organisations um, fail to um, learn lessons. Um, um, from incidents, um, they they fail to to listen to advice from from um, the lower the lower ranks within yeah. the within the organisation. Um, um, people people feel um, scared to to okay. actually yeah. um, um, bring up any concerns just yeah. in case they're ostracised. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. um, Relatable. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, um, there's there's a lot of um, groupthink tendencies yeah. and something called the Abilene paradox tendencies as well, which is very similar to groupthink. Okay. Um, um, where where um, you will get um, groups agreeing to do stuff um, that they don't necessarily buy into. Okay. Yeah. Um, but because of the, the the will of the senior um, team leader or project leader or exec or whatever um they don't say anything yeah um so so um you'll basically get people kind of just agreeing without actually saying anything okay um and the the general consensus around the room is everybody agrees where in fact that's probably not going to be the business continuity landed on your desk what the hell is this <laughs> if i'm being honest <laughs> Um, so I guess at the time I was um, an operations manager. Okay. Yeah, IT operations manager, um, and um, this project landed on my desk called Business Continuity. I looked at it. What is this? I had no idea what it was. Um, me being me, um, I decided to go out and buy a couple of books. Yeah, um, and you know to 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 kind of understand what this project was because they wanted me to to um, uh, completely revamp the whole organization's business continuity. Wow, okay. Uh, so I read these books and um, I was like, oh God, what we have in place is 
really poor, really, really poor. So I um, marched into the um, COO's office and said, <laughs> right, I want to change this. Yeah, and these are the reasons why I want to change it. What do you think? Okay, Rog, go for it. Um, so I did. Yeah, so um, uh, completely rewrote all of the whole the whole process, yeah. literally the whole process. I put in place uh, coordinators in each department. Wow. Yeah. Um, um, obviously, introduced you know the BIAs and the plans and and the the um, regular testing and stuff like that across the whole organisation, um, um, which which was which was great fun. And I kind of realised as I was doing it, oh, this is what I actually want to do. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I want to leave that kind of IT centric career that I had up to that point um, um, behind me. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, just concentrate on this, this new thing called business continuity. It's exciting, um, which guys. Was, which was like really, really, really quite cool. Yeah. So, so okay. um, yeah. Yeah, so we found someone else who's very excited about BCM. So that's mm. always good. It's not just me. So <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good thing. First award. Yes, so um, the first award was a um, joint award. Um, I used to work for a um, global um, um, major investment bank and um, um, essentially uh, my boss and I um, used to work for a fabulous guy. I um, um, can't say his name, so that would give, give the investment bank away. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely fabulous boss. Um, and um, we, we basically decided that the global program um, wasn't particularly good okay. yeah, as far as business continuity was yeah. concerned. Um, um, but there was um, a drive globally um, to um, embed all of the BCM pro processes that head office had created down through all of the regions, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, whether or not it worked or not. Yeah. Uh, so um, um, my boss and I, we basically decided we don't want to do that. Mm. Yeah, um, um, and uh, it 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 helped me coin a phrase that that I use quite a bit now. Yeah, um, um, which is something called glocalization, <laughs> rather than globalization. Copyright. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You um, can't use this until, <laughs> unless you tell Roger that you're using it. <laughs> um, so so um, you know. It's great having a global program, yeah, yeah, but there needs to be regional adaptation to that program, okay. yeah. And yeah. as long as you're meeting all of the minimum standards of the, of 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 the global program, yeah, then it shouldn't matter how you do it, yeah. Um, so yeah. so um, okay, yeah. um, my 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 then boss and I we we decided to do do things completely differently. Um, and go way over and above the minimum standards, yeah. Um, 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 and it was kind of dictated by by the culture cool. of of the front office, really, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, um, because um, glo you know the global program just wasn't up to scratch for their requirements, right? Yeah. So we basically designed a a program that that could be explained to anyone almost in five minutes. Yeah, um, because business continuity can be seen as a bit of a black art. Yeah, um, um, and you know yeah. people just see it as oh, a bomb's gone off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get that a lot. It, it allowed us to 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 sell our version, yeah, our glocalized version to really the nice. London, the uh, London business. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, the strategy of the year. Nice. Yeah, for the CIR awards. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what year that was now. 2014? It, it was, yes, 2014. Yeah, 2014. Yes, gosh, yep. um, ago, yeah. Um, and, um, and we won. You won. We won. It was, we, were, we were shocked. <laughs> we, <laughs> I mean, we were really, really you've shocked. Been yes, you've mm. sold the glocalisation mm. issue, um, put in the basics, um, which we all take for granted, mm. like mm. the number on the back of our pass. I mean, mm. When was the mm. last time you looked at your work pass and thought, oh yeah, mm. actually there's an yeah. emergency number yeah. on there? Yeah. Probably never. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And I think, I think, I think to that point, it was, you know, um, um, one of the, the um, in fact, it's probably the only item that every single person in your company has got. Yeah. 
is a pass to get into the building. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it made perfect sense putting the information that we wanted everyone to know yeah. on the back of that pass. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if the bells go off, you know, most people, they, they, they don't know where they need to go or whatever. Yeah. Um, they don't know who to call. Um, so it was like, oh, it's on the back of my pass. Yeah. We did have a couple of instances where um, people actually took the stick and put it on their drawers. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, oh you know, gosh. and uh, it was like, so, okay, so if the bells go off, are you going to roll your, your, your um, uh, free, free draw pedestal out of the building? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I mean, surprised yeah, people would think yeah, that yeah, could it's do like, that, yeah. why is your sticker on your free draw pedestal? Yeah, it should be in the back of your pass. Yeah. 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 Guys, he won CIR's Student of the Year Award. Believe it or not, <laughs> mature student of the mature year. <laughs> yes, but hey guys, it's, it's never too late to do Absolutely. anything, isn't it? Absolutely. So, so tell, tell us and tell the uh, Resilience Pod viewers what that award was about. Yes, so that award was about the human factors um, of um, handling a crisis. Uh, so I, I called it crisisology. Love it. The human factors. So it yeah. just, let's just pause again and think. Mm. Crisisology, what a cool buzzword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember the, the, um, the, um, the course dean saying, that's not a word. <laughs> uh, and I was like, <laughs> who cares? yeah, who cares? It sounds really cool. And he was like, yeah, but it does actually sound quite yeah, cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah so, um, so I thought I'm going to go. The actual dissertation was about the interconnectivity of um, every organization's ecosystem okay. yeah so it talks about the people it talks about the teams it talks about the culture uh, it yeah. talks about the systems that we we use yeah and you know errors yeah span all of those 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 four streams so you know when you look at the yes. people yeah yeah you've got um you know people walk through the door every morning to come into work and they've got their own stressors, yeah, in place from home, yeah, and they walk into an environment that has more stressors, yeah. Um, and so during a crisis, um, people people not only have the stress of the crisis, they've got the stress of home as well, yeah. Uh, and what people tend to do during a crisis, they tend to fall back on their past experiences, yeah. Even even if those past experiences don't properly fit the actual crisis or incident that's actually occurring at that okay. time yeah so they yeah. tend to fall back on historical cues yeah um, um, now that in itself can cause issues and during my dis uh, dissertation I, I found that 60% of the guys who who, who I actually um, um, interviewed or did surveys and stuff they all believed that if they had um, spent time to actually understand the actual crisis as it was happening yeah they would have made different decisions okay. yeah which was quite interesting the 50,000 word limit of my of my of my dissertation yeah um, there was only so much that I could actually capture so yeah. I had to descope so many different human elements yeah completely out out of the dissertation in order to cover off the team aspects, yeah. the system aspects, the culture as, as, aspects as well. Um, so, so you know, as far as the team is concerned, and I kind of already mentioned that about the group thing, yes. um, the Aberline paradox, I don't know if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. So um, here's a great example, um, and I'll, I'll, make it, I'll make it a real world yeah. example. So you probably all remember when you were kids and it's raining outside it's really really miserable outside and you know you've got your your um um nintendo you know <laughs> yes. your, your game boy or whatever i'm showing my age now yeah, yeah. um uh, <laughs> and you're quite those. happy yeah because it's horrible outside you don't want to go out your mates don't want to go out um um you know your mum is doing something she's she's quite happy reading a magazine or, or whatever you know your sister's upstairs she's she's doing whatever and then your dad comes in and says, like, look let's just go out yeah but it's raining outside no come on let's go out we can go to wherever yeah you know apparently it's it's you know it's sunny over there yeah so let's just go so you all get into the car 
and you drive to Aberline, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and you finally get there after two hours and it's still raining. <laughs> and it's like, why did we come here? <laughs> How did we get here? Yeah, and that demonstrates exactly what happens in most organisations. They start a journey, yeah, they wow. convince people that it's the right thing to do. Yeah, um, um, and because no one wants to be seen as the party pooper in this in this particular yeah, instance, yeah. or being part of the out group, yes. yeah, to go back to the dissertation, yes. yeah, they simply agree. Yeah, uh, they 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 um, um, don't put up any any fight. Yeah, they don't say anything. They yeah. just go along with, go it. along with it. Yeah, and they've taken this journey, and they get to the end of the journey, and they realise. Why did we do it? Okay, so so again, that's 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 that is a, a, that is a real trait that happens in every single yes, organisation. Yeah, and actually, yeah. when you think back at it, you can probably see it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hindsight is a lovely thing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, talking about oh that, um, yeah. um, and and then and then you know, you probably all all um, have experienced um, what's called as a um, a um, self-appointed mind guard. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you've probably all been in in um, a meeting. Yeah. And you, and you don't necessarily agree with with some of the, the decisions that are being made. But there's one person in the room who is kind of deflecting any negativity away from where the project needs to go. Yeah. And that person is a self-appointed mind guard. Yeah. Um, like that, that's that's someone who who. Um, it's totally embedded in the idea for whatever reason, yeah, maybe um, uh, for personal gain yeah, or, yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but they'll deflect any negativity, any yes. negative questions they'll, they'll have a clever answer for, yeah, or, or let's take that offline, you've probably heard that a lot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so, so, <laughs> so um, um, you know, that again, that's one of the human traits, yeah, 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 but that's more on a team basis, yeah, yeah. so if you take those personal um, traits that I spoke about a bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and then put that into a group environment and all those people in the group have got their own stresses as well. So you can really easily see how how um, um, a group can all of a sudden start making really bad decisions, yeah, because of everything else that's going on. Thinking about doing my masters for a very, very, very long time. Um, and um, I, I decided to um, well, literally kick it down the road for years, yeah. years and years, okay. years. Oh, I'll get around to it, I'll get around to it. Yeah. Um, and then in 2013, my dad died. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, and that actually, in fact, I, 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 owe, I owe where I am today to my dad. Yeah. Um, um, because of his death, yeah. it was a kick up the bum for me. Yeah. Um, uh, I basically made two, two for me, two life-changing decisions. Um, um, one was I need to do my masters. I need to do, it, you know, and, and I need to get this, you know, started like now, now type thing. Yeah. yeah. And two was to start playing tennis seriously. Okay. Yeah. So um, within a month and a half of dad dying, um, I joined up to a tennis club. Wow. Yeah, I still play. I play three times a week. Yeah, and I love it. And I play for I, I play for um, Letchworth now, which is great. So I absolutely love that. And I was signed up um, um, to do my masters in business continuity, security, and emergency management. Um, so um, without without dad, that wouldn't have happened. So I think I would still be kicking it down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so. So um, I basically put everything in, in, into it. It's, um, um, I didn't go uni yeah, um, after school. Yeah, I, I just started working. Wow. Yeah, um, um, and um, you know, I got on to the master's course because of my experience in the field. Yeah, um, and it was, it was a bit of a shock, certainly for me, because <laughs> um, um, I remember my first, first couple of papers that I did during my master's course. And um, um, my um, uh, tutor said, look, this is really, really good stuff, but I would fail you on this because your writing um, isn't academic. Yeah, your writing as a, as a professional 
working for an organization so you need to change your mindset um, um I was like oh wow yeah, yeah. So, so I had to retrain myself because obviously I'd never been to uni yeah um, um and you know so it was a, it was a lot easier for some of the other guys on the course to to kind of flip that switch from from you know business orientated to academic yes. whereas me I, I had a big switch called business and I had to kind of like yeah 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 absolutely yeah. Absolutely. So, wow. so that was that was really, really tough for me. Really, really tough. But um, um, I really, I literally threw, threw everything um, behind it, and it, it, it was it was funny. Um, um, the the uh, guys that, that in in the global program, you know, the, the one I was talking about, where we decided to localize rather than gl yes. follow the global model. Yeah. Um, um, they were like, oh, um, everyone in the business continuity. Um, Division. There was about 40, 40 people around the, around the world. Oh, they have to do do. I think it was forty hours CPD. Yeah. Um, um, so can you can you all provide evidence of how much CPD you did? So I I did that, and mine <laughs> mine was in the thousands. <laughs> and they were like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, oh right. Now we'll just say you've just done the forty. <laughs> Way to downplay my achievements, but yeah, so that was quite wow, amusing. So yeah. that was quite amusing. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so isn't it interesting that from that doing that U-turn from business language to academic to then the inspiration from your father and actually motivating you to kick yourself to to do these things to then winning an award for your thesis. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, I, I just don't have mm. words to describe how amazing that is. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was really emotional um, yeah. actually getting that award um, in 2016. Uh, um, it's actually quite embarrassing as well because uh, it was the first award of the night. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, um, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know what happened, but, but um, <laughs> essentially it was like, okay, here's the award for, you know, student of the year. Um, and they started talking about the person. Yeah. And I realized almost straight away, it was me that they were talking, <laughs> you know, they were talking about. And I think it just all got to my head, just emotions, everything else. Even before my name was called out, I was up on the stage. It was so your name wasn't announced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it hadn't been announced. They were just talking about this this person who 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 had uh, you know, despite you know having a full time job, yeah, had had um, done this dissert you know this dissertation around 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 the human factors of crisis management. So as soon as I heard that, I was whoop, me, I was me, up. Yeah. I was like, that's me. <laughs> I was up on the stage, and I was like, oh god, they haven't said my name yet. Let's <laughs> come back down again. Hilarious, <laughs> absolutely it's, hilarious. And you should remember it. Mm, yeah, people, absolutely. People that were there will remember the situation. Mm, absolutely. So if you did, drop us a note because I'd love to hear more about it because it's the best uh, thing I've heard. It's um, hilarious. Brilliant. Um, but, um, but very emotional very because, emotional. yeah, 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 because, um, yeah, I, I remember, I remember sort of coming back, back, back to the table. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I was, I was, I was sat, sat with the SunGuard guys. The SunGuard again sponsored me um, because Lovely, um, yeah. um, um, my account manager read my dissertation, yeah. and he said, "Rog, this is great. I'm, you know, we should definitely do it." Um, and I remember sitting down, and I was quite tearful. I'm not going to lie, because I was thinking of dad, yeah. and, and you know, thanks, dad. Yeah. You know, so. Brilliant. So it was cool. It yeah. was really cool. Really Think, cool. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. I yeah, know yeah. it was a few years ago, but you should always mm. um, be appreciative of it and, and boast about it. Yeah. So we've got award winner, another <laughs> award winner in the pod, mm. guys. So you've heard it here first from Roger, if you didn't know him already. So, so that resilience layer, um, as I said, it has to come from the top. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but, you know, you've got to, you've got to understand what you have. So, so finding out, you know, about your crown jewels, for instance, yeah, um, um, is essential. And to be honest, the only way you can really do that is um, um, is to use that business continuity BIA, the business impact analysis yes, document, yes, right? Yes. Um, that document. I don't think people realise how important that document is, right? Mm. Um, because you know, not only is it for the business continuity professional. Yeah, um, it's also for the resilience professional. Yeah, it's also for the um, IT disaster recovery professional, the incident management professional, the crisis management professional. 
yeah, um, because it highlights all of the material um, crown jewels, yeah, that you need to protect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so, so you know, don't just do a BIA and and you know and then develop plans. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, um, and we need to look at the bigger picture. Yeah. It's you know, okay. So you've got your 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 main processing system whatever that's called we call it yeah. system x i guess yeah but um what does that sit on you know that's on a server yeah maybe yeah yeah or it could be in the cloud yeah you know so um um how is that protected you know um you know is it is it is it required really really quickly you know you know let's say one hour or yeah. immediate or something like that yeah so that dictates that that server yeah needs to have some sort of you know synchronous yeah. kind of link yeah you know you can't be relying on oh okay we'll do a manual failover to 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 um a a backup server or worse still oh we don't have a server let's bring one in yeah you know <laughs> uh, and then what about your data yes. yeah you know um your data needs to be um easily accessible yeah so that you can meet your recovery time objectives yeah and your recovery point objectives as well yeah so so you know again how is that protected and what does that sit yeah. on yeah. yeah so you know you know so now you're looking at, at at the server level you're looking at your data yeah you're looking at your network level you're looking at your connectivity levels you're looking at your router levels yeah and so on and so on and so on yeah and then you know what about your your other dependencies so oh i get this this information from let's say operations yeah, but how, how does operations provide you with that data? Oh, they use that system. Okay, so what about the servers that that, that sits on the data that they get that from and yeah. the network and the yeah. routers? And it just, it's a massive web. Yeah. It's a massive, massive and, web. And that's the power <coughs> of the BIA, isn't it? It, it helps identify that. Absolutely. Yeah. It gives you a starting point. It, gi it gives yes. you a starting yeah. point. And then unfortunately, you have to talk to <laughs> the, the, the tech, tech guys and what you'll find is that tech is really siloed. Yeah, um, you know, I, 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 I know organisations, I'm not going to mention any names, that no one can give me a full picture of how their technology environment looks. Oh, they can give me this little bit, but then you need to go and talk to this person, then they'll give you that bit, and oh, then you need to talk to that, <laughs> and then they'll give you that bit. Um, yes. um, you know, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable, yeah. you know. So, so it's down to, you know, the resilience kind of specialist to pull, I guess, pull all that, that together. together. Yeah, so. Okay, advice for newbies, BCM or res resilience professionals in the industry, what would be your number one or a few advice tips? Okay, so I, I, would, I would probably say, obviously, listen a lot, yeah. Um, research a lot, um, buy, buy, buy a book, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know, don't be embarrassed about buying, you know, business continuity for dummies or whatever. Don't be embarrassed about that because that's got everything, you know, that you need in order to 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 actually be a pretty damn good business continuity professional. Yeah, you know, that will start your career, you know, really, really well, I believe. Yeah. You know, um, um, you know, look at the the um, uh, standards, you know, you know, um, uh, you know, ISO 22301 and, and you know, even ISO um, uh, 22316 as well, you know, um, um, because, again, you know, if, if, if you're if you're if, if you've embedded yourself with the industry standards, yeah, you can't go far wrong. Yep. So, yeah. so I, I would, I would definitely, definitely do that. I mean, I've, I've got a bit of a, a bit of a track record for, for, for getting newbies into business continuity. You have, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so my, my old assistant, um, um, I, I took her from the customer services area, and she worked with me for two years, um, um, and I said to her, okay, it's time, it's time for you to spread your wings and <laughs> go somewhere else now yeah yeah um and do business continuity yeah um um and uh, um you know you know because you can't you can't in my mind you can't do business continuity in one organization and that's the only experience that you have yeah because it's so different in different so true. sectors yeah, and stuff like that absolutely yeah. you know one minute you could be working um you know you know, at a petrochemical 
company doing business continuity and then the next you could be working working um, for local government doing business continuity yeah they, they've got different ideas on how it should be done mm -hmm. and that just makes you more of a grounded more of a grounded um, um, professional I would say so so you know um, when my old assistant left she got herself um, you know a, a new BC job yeah yeah um, and so she's now gone up she one has, rung, which yes. is like fantastic, yes. and you've you've met oh, her. Yes, I know her. Yeah, Lots yeah. Of potential. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> you know, pod, you yeah. know, she's doing amazingly, which is superb. Um, um, so I was super stoked. Yeah, that that she decided to stay in the industry, which is great. Yeah. Um. Um. So so um. Uh, that left a gap in my department. So I went back to customer services. Okay. Yeah, and I've got another person that you've also met yes, yes. yeah um, um so she's new she's only two months in yeah has a lot of potential yes. so hopefully hopefully you know you know she'll hold on to my coattails yeah and um you know learn you know and read and mm -hmm. research and stuff like that and um, you know hopefully this would be her new career as well great what an inspiration <laughs> i'm not a huge book reader okay obviously I had to read loads of books for my masters yeah. um, 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 but my current book that I'm reading yeah um, do you remember when I said to you oh you know you know I have been told oh you need to think a bit more strategic so um, one of the things that I did um, um, aside from getting a mentor uh, and things like that um, I bought some strategic books yeah to Fabulous. to actually um, um, find out okay what am I not doing yes, yeah because yes. I thought I was being strategic, strategic. but anyway there you go <laughs> well, maybe yeah also, yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe yeah. yeah so um, here's one it's a great book wow. yeah strategic in action <laughs> yeah uh, it's a really okay. really good book actually and yeah. the reason why I like this book is as they're talking about all of the things that you need to think about they put real world examples in there so you'll oh. see companies mentioned here like Apple and you know you know even Lidl's in here oh, yeah yeah nice. you know about okay, about yeah. you know some of the oh, things that yeah. they've actually implemented and stuff like that it's a really good book yeah so it's by Max McEwen yeah um, it's a really really good book the the strategy that's the book to get guys and yeah. that's another one that I don't have so yeah. I'm going to get that immediately now as soon as you leave mm. oh, so cool. I can read it <laughs> so thank you uh, mm. get that book if you've read it if the readers have read it then let me know and let Roger know mm. what they found and maybe mm. we can share some notes and, yeah, and, and talk book. about it or or if you guys have experienced in strategy, being strategic and what does that mean to you let us know because uh, mm. yeah. yeah. we don't know that yet so <laughs> So, Apparently, yeah, allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, <laughs> Roger, allegedly, Roger, John Roger doesn't know that. So, yeah. <laughs> Where can our Resilience Pod viewers and readers find you, Roger? So, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. please feel free yeah, um, to, to um, um, reach out. You know, um, um, you know, I, I never decline anyone who's in business continuity or resilience. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, and to be fair, I, I don't really decline, decline anyone, to be fair. <laughs> we've come to an end of our time together mm. um, so many more questions for Roger but we don't want to spend the whole day interrogating him um, he is looking through the mood book to see how he is feeling um, now after the after our little chat and interview so let's see what he says yeah, you could have that corner of your he's desk. Not, he's not cranky. Yeah, you can have that corner of your desk and, you know, <laughs> you could, you know anyone, yeah. anyone come there, oh, I'm not going anywhere near here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of two, actually. Okay. It's got yeah, two. so um, I'm, I'm feeling chipper. Chipper, okay. And I'm feeling inspired. Inspired, yeah. great. But I am still peckish. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't find it. <laughs> okay, so um, apart from still being peckish, which isn't a bad thing, guys, Roger is feeling chipper and, and inspired. inspired. Yes, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And why are you feeling those things? Let's forget mm. the peckish part. I guess. Yeah, you know, I'm, I've, I feel inspired um, because um, I'm hoping that people will you know, especially the newbies will listen to yeah. what we've been talking about yeah. um, and they they will get inspiration from what we've been talking about and 
start their journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of hopeful for that as well. Yeah. It's very um, much, yeah. And Chipper, this has been it's been a great experience. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Really, really good. And, but and peckish I, because I am. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll fix that in a minute. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm feeling the same. I'm feeling very. I was very focused when when you came in because I had all these questions for mm -hmm. you and I'm feeling inspired from yeah. all the things that you said and all your experiences and it's just reinforcing um, some of, some of the good stuff and you've given us and the resilience pod viewers a lot to think about so cool. thank you thank you very much thank for you. coming to the awesome. pod um, mm. and hopefully we'll be seeing you again soon and who knows might be interviewing you again when you're mm. in five years when you're who knows who knows he's mastered the strategy and is <laughs> yeah <a> yeah <laughs> resilience expert so Absolutely. thank you very much for coming yeah, and off my doctorate who yes, knows <laughs> yeah winning other awards winning, winning who some more awards yeah, but yeah. yeah so Brilliant. thank you again thank you for having so me much, thank yeah. you for thank having you. me awesome